and little fellow problem solvers. So they're going to be doing a geometry practice. Let's build up some technique here. I used to try this out for about 20-ish minutes, and now let's begin. So, we're triangle ABC. Okay, we're given these side lengths, and we have the length of the height from C is equal to the sum of the lengths from heights of A and B. So let's say the height of C is called height C. That's the length of it. And this is equal to H of A plus H of B. The height from A from height from B. So, and we need to go from here and prove this. And then if A, B, and C are integers, we need to prove that this is a perfect square. Again, interesting stuff. And finally, we need to, what's it called? Compute C in terms of A and B. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do this. What can we, how can we use this? How can we use this to get to 1 over A plus 1 over B is 1 over C? Well, and if you haven't paused here and thought, how do you use this? How do you use this? Pause for two minutes. How? The answer is, well, we need something that it connects these heights together. Something same that connects them together. And what is that same thing? The area. So let P be the area. Then I know that's 2 times the area is equal to HA times A is equal to HB times B is equal to HC times C, right? So now I can write HA in terms of the area over A. So I have HA is equal to 2 times the area over A. HB is equal to 2 times the area over B. HC is equal to 2 times the area over C. And then when I sub these two up, I get HA plus HB is HC. So it means 2P over A plus 2P over B is 2P over C. So let's sum these two up and we'll get that 2P over A plus 2P over B is equal to 2P over C. Now what do we do? Well, the area is positive. So bam, 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 we can cancel these ones out, dividing by the area. And we get that from here it follows. 1 over A plus 1 over B is 1 over C. Bam, what well, we needed to prove right here. And now let's move on to the next one. A, B, C are integers. Okay, they're integers. And we have this holds true for them. What does this mean for us? And then we need to show that A squared plus B squared plus C squared is a perfect square. Well, let's see. So because these are integers, let's sort of have an integer sort of thing on both sides. We're going to have... When we multiply by a, b, c, we're going to have a plus b times c. That's what happens when you multiply by a, b, c here is equal to a times b. How do we get these squares? Maybe we need to add or subtract something here. How do we get these squares? That's the question. Oh, wait a second. It's like this holds true. c, a plus c, b, a, b. Hmm. I can add or subtract to this thing right here that we have, a squared plus b squared plus c squared, I can add or subtract c a plus c b minus a b. In fact, I can do this multiple times. I can also do the opposite. I can do a b minus c b minus c a, right? I can add twice of this, subtract this twice, whatever I want. I invite you, please pause for five minutes. Do you see anything you can add or subtract? to make this a perfect square. And the thing is now, think about it, think about it, think about it, what do we have? We have, if I write this down as, like this is similar to x plus y plus z squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 2xy plus 2yz plus 2zx, right? That's what this is similar to. Now I ask you, instead of z, if z is equal to negative t, then this is x plus y minus t squared is equal to. This becomes the same. It's like x squared plus y squared plus t squared. But now we have 2xy is the same, yay. But now 2yz is 2y times minus t, which gives us minus 2ty minus 2tx. So here, if we add, what's it called, this thing once, like this is the same as a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus 2ab minus 2bc minus 2ac. And this we know we can factor as a plus b minus c squared. And I'll give an a, b, c are integers. This thing right here is what? A 
perfect square. So that finishes this. This is a bit algebraic as opposed to something that's more number theoretic. So this is done now. Boom. And now, what about this? Compute C in terms of A and B. How do we do that? What are we going to try out? Pause now. I said, I mean, I didn't say how long, but it's like a little bit, like two, five minutes. And the idea is, well, let's go back here. We have one over C, huh? But I want C. Well, this thing right here is the same as one over C is when I have, when I put them under the same, what is it, is denominator, I have AB over A plus B. And so this is one over C. So I flip that around and I get C is equal to AB over A plus B. And now I have C in terms of A and B and I am done. Boom. This finishes up our like geometric, you know, playing around, really building up technique here. And it goes to like, this is something that's used somewhat, especially at the beginning in geometry, where you look at things in terms of areas. I usually write 2P because in my language, area starts with a P. I realized in English, it starts with a capital A area, but A, to each their own. This finishes up our problem. And as always, thanks for problem solving.